And welcome back. Let's give you the starting lineups tonight. First for Southwestern, the Mound Builders will start Andrew O'Brien. He's a 6'7 junior out of Halstead, Kansas. Kevin Clark, a 5'11 junior from Arkansas City, Kansas. Cooper Pierce, a 6'5 senior from Arkansas City, Kansas. Dang Bull, a 6'2 senior out of Kansas City, uh, Missouri. And Zach Hidalgo, a 6'7 freshman from Hooker, Oklahoma. So for Southwestern, it's Hidalgo, O'Brien, Clark, Pierce, and Bull for 14-year head coach Matt O'Brien and the Southwestern College Mound Builders. For Bethel, they will start Jalen Todd. He's a 6'5 junior from Deer Creek, Oklahoma. They also start Clifford Bird, a 6'1 grad student from Memphis, Texas. Bryant Mockaby, a 6'5 grad student, Goddard, Kansas. He played at Derby High School. Harper Jonas, a 6'4 junior from Andover, Kansas. And the other starter is uh, the freshman of the year in the KCAC, Carmelo Yakubu, a 6'4 freshman out of Houston, Texas. So for the Threshers, it'll be Todd, Bird, Yakubu, Mockaby, and Jonas for seven-year head coach Jason Artaz and the Bethel College Threshers. I love the view in here tonight. Scott Gurney back with me here. A lot of Bethel fans right behind you and I across the way. A pretty fair gathering of black and purple for Southwestern. That it is, a full house uh, for where they're allowing them to sit. But uh, like you said earlier, just a great venue uh, to, to have the KCAC championship. You couldn't ask for two better teams. And their fan support's phenomenal. Well, the location again, you got Newton just up the road, maybe, what, uh, 10, 15 minutes from here. For Southwestern, it's uh, right at one hour from my house here. Um, and then you got Friends University. You know, the women's matchup, Scott, real quick. Number five, St. Mary. Number seven, Friends. Shocker on the women's side. Who'd have thought? I think everybody thought Sterling had kind of the, had the easy way into the, to the matchup, but they lost some key players at key times. Really, as you would expect, grade A officials. I've seen them all season long in the league, Scott. And uh, uh, Mark Wagers, he did the game. Um, was it? No, he did the game Wednesday in Winfield. Yep. Uh, Justin Souser is here. He did the Southwestern Bethel game in North Newton just a week and a half ago. Um, and I can't think of the other gentleman's name, but they've done a ton of games in our league. Yes. Ball is in the air, won by Southwestern. And we're underway from Hartman Arena. As Scott and I look at it, right to left is Southwestern. O'Brien with it up top, gives to Clark. Clark followed by Bird, takes it to the rim. Right hand, no good. Rebound, Bethel. And Scott, they really secured the window there. Yeah, and it, it's really going to come down to that, I think, tonight is who's going to be the toughest in the paint tonight. you got to be physical, and it's got to come down to physicality and paint. It leads to other things. We'll talk more about that. Jonas with it on the arc. Jonas with the right hand into the lane. Up with the right hand. That's no good. Rebound Hidalgo. So both teams, uh, runners and no good. Clark on the SCN. Jonas for Bethel. Here's Clark left side. Good shot fake. Takes it in. Gives off to Hidalgo. Out to O'Brien. Left wing. Didn't pump it up there. He'll drive into the lane. Over to Pierce. Right wing three. Miss. And a battle for the rebound. And it's Yakubu getting it for the Threshers. Yeah, once he had just coming up empty. But, you know, hey, just getting warmed up. Getting getting the feelers open. This place is tougher to shoot at than what the, the different arenas that these two teams play in. Jonas, nice little ball fake. Got a step on Clark. He'll put in the first two. Yeah. You know, we talk about points in the paint being tough on the tough in the paint. Having that physicality. The team that's more physical in the paint leads to defensive rebounds. Leads to offensive rebounds. Is another opportunity miss for the Bound Builders. O'Brien not really in rhythm. Left wing three hit nothing but window. Here's Bird with it. Guarded by SC's defensive stopper. Dang bowl. Bird in the lane. Shot up and no good. O'Brien the rebound. Builders trail 2-0. O'Brien from right to left to the arc. Drives to the baseline. Corner three. Clark. Good. Kevin Clark gives the Builders the lead. Anywhere and past the half court line <laughs> is range for Kevin Clark. It Everyone knows that's where the game plan starts, Scott, and he still does what he does. Here's oh. Mockaby into the lane. And O'Brien, oh, near strip, but a foul called. And Andrew, who runs with a high motor, 
calmed himself down quick, which is good to see. It is. It is. You can't get let the emotions get the best of you here. Got to keep your composure. So many aspects. If you want to come down and win this game, can't get in foul trouble. Got to stay on the court. Your studs got to be studs. Mockaby catch, shoot, baseline, no good. Yakubu the rebound, up, miss, tip, miss. Rebound, Hidalgo's got it for Southwestern. Fins off a couple of threshers. Gives that, it off to O'Brien. That's being tough on the defensive glass right there. The physicality, keep that in mind throughout this contest. Clark, a quick catch and shoot. That shot no good. Ricochets out of bounds. And they'll say it's off of Southwestern. Mm. And, you know, there's maybe a rush shot there by Kevin, although I don't know if there's ever a bad Clark shot. <laughs> well, he does have a quick release, and, and, and he, you'll notice as he moves with the basketball, he can split the legs, make a quick shot, and be down to the other end before it goes down the hole. Boy, the sea of purple really filling in across the way. Bird off a moving screen from Todd into the lane. Bird couldn't get a shot, nearly walked. Now Yakubu out to Jonas, deep three, miss. Rebound, Cooper Pierce. Yeah, nice work there, cleaning the defensive glass. And I like to talk about the physicality. That just leads to more. It leads to pace. How fast can you get out and run? Do you Can you run at a comfortable pace that you're used to running at? Kevin Clark got around Bird. He finishes with the right hand, Scott. He got whacked and a chance for three for Clark. Again, another aspect of his game. He's a three-level scorer and you can get it yeah. done anywhere. That's exactly right. I mean, he doesn't mind going and getting nailed in the, lane, no. in the rim. No. He went down hard, too. He's gathering himself right now. He said one of the hardest things on his body is his head, so that's what he leads with. <laughs> is that from Todd or, uh, or his mom? I, I, I plead to fit. <laughs> Clark to shoot one, 89% on the season, hits the free throw. Here's Jarvis Jennings in for Hidalgo. And what's interesting what Matt O'Brien has done with Jennings here, he will guard in the post. He'll guard Jalen Todd, even though he's undersized, but he's really strong. He's that guy off the bench that just can lift you up. When things aren't going right, subby man makes things happen. 6-2 to two Southwestern. Yakubu at the free throw line. A collision at the free throw line by a couple of players. Now Bird elevates his shot up. Good. A two-pointer. Clifford yeah. Bird. You can just see how smooth it is. Oh. He's the scorer. And Dang was not on him there. They got switched. O'Brien looking to hand off to Clark. Now does. He's on the arc. Kevin with the left hand into the lane. Powers it up. No good. Might have been blocked. And Yakubu with the rebound. Boy, you look at his frame. He doesn't look like a freshman, but he's the freshman of the year. Here's a corner three. Jonas miss. Bull the rebound. Yeah, you see nobody underneath for the Threshers allowing... SC to come away with some easy defensive boards. O'Brien getting into that lane. Got his man in the air. Puts it up. And a foul here on Harper Jonas. And I think that's key tonight. If, if the Mound Builders can get the Threshers into foul trouble, yep. get that starting five onto the bench, pay dividends in the end. Agreed. Two houses. When you think of Stewart Fieldhouse and Thresher Gymnasium, the students makes such a home court advantage for both teams. It's interesting to see them here in Hartman separated a little bit, both making noise. Absolutely, and uh, typically used to the, hear the baseball guys really explode loud, and uh, when you've got football teams, that's a whole different dynamic. <laughs> Andrew O'Brien hit the first free throw, 7-4 Southwestern. Second free throw, good by OB. 8-4 Builders. Trey Abasolo into the game for SC. All he did was score 20 off the bench on Saturday at Oklahoma Wesleyan. Bird, left hand dominant, guarded by Bull. Here to the near side, Maccabi got open three pointer. Good, Maccabi. Elevation with a wide open look, can't let it happen. 8 7 Southwestern. Jennings. He had 11 in the win Saturday, got to the rim. Here he does it again. Right hand, no good. And the rebound to Bethel. Great take, Jarvis very left hand dominant. He went up with the right hand, missed it. Here's Bird, nearly lost it. Jonas gives off to Todd and now out to Bird. Bird, a deep three, that's gonna miss everything. Rebound O'Brien. O'Brien right there where he needed to be, but again, an open look. Clark, again, he's in shooting range across half court, now guarded by Jalen Todd. Kevin loves this, blow by, takes it to the rim. A lot of contact, missed the shot. Kevin thought there was a foul. Yeah, I think there was. There was a lot of contact on the play with the body. Maccabee trying to get to the baseline. Cut off there by Abasolo. Nice find. Jonas, 4-3, miss. Rebound, dang bowl. Again, the backdrop for both of these rims is different than what these teams are used to seeing. 
Dang Bowl, a rare three. Top of the key, good. Dang Bowl for three. Oh, look out. That's a good sign in Mound Builder Nation right there. Oh, we saw it at Oak Woo. Mound Builder's shooting deadly from the outside. 11-7 Southwestern. Mockaby into the lane, up with the shot. Miss, rebound Abasolo. Throws it ahead to O'Brien, one-on-one with Jonas. He'll slow it up for a moment. Over to Dang, right wing. Bull dribbling into trouble. To Jennings, left wing three. That's offline, and it'll go out of bounds. Dang tries to save it and does. Bethel's got it. Dang doesn't give up. Now a pass and a near steal. Oh, they call a kick. And no argument from Jarvis, although he looks at his hand like I got it with my hand. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me as well. We don't have a replay to take a look at that one more, but it sure looked like he got his hand. But again, an athletic play, getting a body part in the passing lane, breaking things up. Bethel is out of reset. Jason Artas said on the radio today, for anyone who's not familiar with these teams, this is a game to come watch because they're going to all lay it out there. We're seeing it here in the first six minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. Yakubu driving into Abasolo. That shot no good. Trey White gets the rebound for the builders. How about Trey White showing off the athleticism? Could jump out of the gym. He has really come on since the second semester started for Southwestern, embracing that role. Here's O'Brien, left wing three in rhythm. Good, O'Brien for three. Timeout. Bethel will keep it right here. 14-7 builders. You said it in rhythm. That's what pace does for you. You get a rebound on the other end. You can get into your transition game. You set the pace. As your pace goes, your shooters can develop. Those smooth shots can get wide open. Beautiful execution of the transition offense. 14.02 14.02 to go here in the first half. The Mondoters lead 14-7. to seven. What I said going into Bartlesville Saturday is not only Clark, but you got to have Phillip Smith, Trey White, Andrew O'Brien, Dang Bowl hit a three or so. Builders getting that early here tonight with Dang and Andrew O'Brien. Yeah, that, that first five's got to have that support coming off the bench. If your bench can outscore those guys on the other line, uh, it just does great things for you. It's a, such a positive to have those guys come up through and give you valuable minutes. What a year in the KCAC. So competitive, but as good as I've seen it. Seem to say that every year, but it just keeps getting better and better. The coaches in our league are tremendous. Out of the Bethel timeout, Yakubu, free throw line. Spin move, a beauty, up with the shot, no. Foul on Abasolo. Yeah, Abasolo just got beat on the drive. He knows it, but hey, he did the right thing. Going to force him to make it at the free throw line. Much like you saw, we saw if you ever watched Purdue play, and uh, especially Mm. Purdue, Indiana, what they do defensively against a big man uh, is incredible. And you gotta, you can't allow them to have just freebies at the rim. Yakubu's first free throw short, no good. Bethel in the win over Southwestern did a lot of one-on-one, really attack Kevin Clark on the defense, making him play defense. Jared Richardson, who's in the game, had maybe his best game of the season against Southwestern the last time out. A 79-71 win by the Threshers on that night after the Builders led by 11 in the first half. That's the killer. Yeah. Can One out of two. 14-8. Philip Smith has come into the game for Southwestern. O'Brien into the lane, guarded by Yakubu. Whips into the corner. Smith, left wing three. Missing. Rebound Richardson on the backside. Gives it off to Bird. Bird picked up by Solo. Into the lane. Just Euro steps his way, and it somehow came off the iron. Sometimes it's, <laughs> you got to have that ball, that shot roll your way. O'Brien driving, and we'll get a trip here on Jared Richardson. Just got a little off step there. So foul on Bethel as the builders giving Matt O'Brien, Scott, saying how important it is to make sure Kevin Clark gets some minutes. He just can't run him 38 minutes with how he plays. Absolutely. He just, he's, you know, full throttle all the time. Uh, he does know when to throttle it down, but you got to give him those clips where he's off the court and can rest, but they've got the bench to do it. Builders play into Trey White, Javen Hutton. Talented freshman in the game for the Threshers. Here's O'Brien through the lane, out to Trey White. Good shot fake. Trey to the right elbow, up with the shot, and in and out. No good. Yeah, a good-looking shot. Just got to be able to finish that halfway down and popped out. Christian Whitaker into the game for Bethel. Boy, he was a difference maker last time out. Here's Richardson to the rim. Missing. Rebound. Smith went right over the top of him to grab it. Again, shots just deflecting off the 10. 
for Bethel right now, giving the Mound Builders second chance opportunities. Pierce takes it down inside and puts it in for two. Builders lead 16-8. Oh, just playing the big man inside, using that body, that physicality, get to the rim, making enough room to get a good shot. I got to get your thoughts on Cooper Pierce here in a minute when we get a chance. Here's Richardson into the lane, plays it out to Yakubu. Thought about the three. Builders will give him that shot. He'll pump it up there. That's no good. Rebound Pierce. He gets fouled by Hutton. No call. And here come the Builders. These guys are going to let him play, too. I mean, we're not going to be pleading for calls. It's it's a championship game. Absolutely. And you got to get you got to let the pace of the game yeah. develop how the game's going to go and predict that. And, and, uh, and these guys know it. Yeah. Here's O'Brien, short corner. Yakubu on him. Andrew now backing in. Back to the hoop. O'Brien into the lane, finds Solo, right wing three. A little bit long, Trey White, the rebound for SC. Over to Solo. Solo into the lane, over dribbled it. Stolen by Richardson. And he'll take it to the rim and in for two. 16 to 10, but the builders will not slow down. Quickly up the floor, O'Brien. O'Brien into the lane with the right hand, short rebound, Whitaker. Tried to float that one in instead of using the the backboard or just going up and dunking it. Maccabi gives to Hutton. Hutton uber quick, drives it in there, throws it up, no good, rebound SC. Pierce with it on the arc. Pierce into the lane, got tripped over to O'Brien. O'Brien, I don't know where that pass was going, fortunate for SC, tipped out of bounds, and a wave of players coming in. Yeah, O'Brien just got out of position there, got it caught up in the air, was able to get rid of it. Possession stays with SC and yep. you know, 22 seconds left. So it's not like you handcuffed yourself there with shot clock dwindling down or anything. And Scott, Kevin Clark and Dang Bull were out for about three minutes plus a timeout. So they got some good rest. Dang gets the inbounds for Southwestern. Jab step right, takes it left, into the corner, Pierce with it. Pierce backing in on, on uh, Nick Bonner who's coming to the game. Now Solo with it. Abba Solo to the free throw line, over to Clark. Clark, fadeaway, right wing, three on line. It was tracking, but short. Yeah, it left a little bit short. Again, appeared to be rushed just a little bit. Shooter's got to shoot, though. In the corner, Bonner for three, miss. Rebound, Jonas, up and in for two. What a play by him. That was, that was a very aggressive play. Again, just being physical inside and saying, I'm going to go get it, it's mine, and taking control. 16 to 12, Southwestern. 10.40 10.40 to go, first half. Abba Solo right wing, gives to Clark, cutting down inside the Solo, out to Pierce. Pierce got around Bird, up with the right hand, and good, Cooper Pierce. The floater for Cooper Pierce, just showing his versatility, went underneath, got it up right underneath the rim this time, the short jumper. Love it. Javen Hutton into the lane, got it to go. No basket, it was on the floor, and it'll be on Abba Solo. So critical to SC's success late, uh, Scott, and that's his second foul. Yeah, and, and, and again, when you've got a team that's not hitting those shots inside, again, keep them from getting to the rim. You don't have to let them yeah. have those shots. You've got a deep bench. Use them. So the uh, threshers to throw it in. Not much argument from Jason Artez. Of course, it's so loud in here. I'm not sure it matters. Here is Jonas to the rim and in for two and a foul. Great take. Yeah, it was. Once again. Jonas showing his physicality, being able to get to the rim. Just hungry to get the basket. I know it's easy to say at championship time, it just like two teams that are so connected. I mean, they just have so many great working parts. It's just fun to see. Yeah, and when, and when you compare these two teams side by side on, on their numbers throughout the year, it's just like these guys both, they both teams love to push it. Both coaches like to play with tempo, and they love to be physical. Free throw no good by Harper Jonas. Builders lead by four. Almost halfway through the first half. Clark to bowl. Bird is using all his energy on the defensive side right now, trying to keep Kevin Clark from a touch. Bowl pops out right side. Bull looks right, tries to dribble left. Good defense there by Bonner. Spin move and Dang draws a foul. And it'll be two shots for DB. I like what Matt O'Brien's doing right now with this club, really trying to drive it inside, draw those fouls. Add them up, right? Yeah, hey, oh, yeah, add them up. By the end, it's Coop, something. You're from Arc City. You Absolutely. know you know Arc City basketball. Cooper Pierce, you know, Kevin gets a lot of the ink, and, and deservedly so. But to see Cooper Pierce come to Southwestern and go through the JV program and watch him develop and grow has to be fun to see a, a local guy doing so well. I, I know it is for me. Oh, it, it, it absolutely is. I mean, uh, grew up, uh, watched Cooper grow up uh, throughout all the youth programs. And uh, my youngest son, of course, 
a uh, big fan of his. <laughs> just just watching him mature, and you, you think this big skinny kid, can he really play at a high level? Can he be physical at the collegiate level? If you ever had any doubts, you need to watch some film because this dude can get it done. Well, and I, Scott, I love guys that are patient. Two years in the JV program isn't sexy. It's not glamorous. And he just waited his time. He, he The last two years, he's been a mainstay on this roster. He definitely has. And, and you know, just, he committed. Matt O'Brien committed yep. to him. He committed to the program. He loves it. You can tell his parents do. They're eating it up. Good things happen to people that work hard. Here's Bird really having to work. Jennings on the deck. It'll be a foul on Bethel. Jalen Todd thought there was a flop. It's going to be a second foul, I believe, on Jalen Todd. Yep. Definitely is. And I, I, I just love the intensity that their, yeah. both teams are playing at right now, trying to do whatever it takes to give their, their team the edge. And it's fun to watch, but this is what championship basketball is all about. Playing for the ship, as uh, the playing young people say. Ship. That's right, playing for the ship. Bull made both his free throws, by the way, as we wax poetic here. 20 to 14, Southwestern leads. Here's O'Brien dribbling left. Bird not giving much room. They're not helping off of Clark at all, which makes it a little easier maybe on drives. Here's O'Brien trying to get to the baseline. Gives to Kevin in the near corner. Clark, no room there. Seven to shoot. Clark, little shimmy, drives into the lane. Up with the right hand. No good. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by Bethel, and it's Dang Bowl making it happen. But the shot clock, now they'll reset it. It was at one. Let's see where they put it at. They're going to leave it at 20 here. It did. Yeah. I didn't think that shot hit the rim. I didn't think it did either, but um, maybe just one of those fortunate events for SC. Inbounds to O'Brien. They cleared out here on the near side, trying to drive on Whitaker. Look at Whitaker just get those big knees and thighs in his way. Gives it off to Bull. Bull, what a shimmy there. He takes it to the rim and a foul on Bethel. And hey, again, they're not going to let Clark get his. Others have to step up, and Dang Bull's accepting that challenge. Absolutely, and he can get it done. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And if he has to get them all from the free throw line, then so be it. But just another critical chess piece. Yep, yeah. Second foul on uh, Nick Bonner, the junior out of Derby. You know, we talk about the local flair for Southwestern with Clark and Pierce from Ark City. You know, Bethel's got a couple Derby guys, and Harper Jonas was at Andover. It's fun to see guys from the area excelling in our league. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's so fun to watch them grow and, and uh, play at this level, out of the high school ranks, and just be local guys that we know, that we've, yeah. you know, we've called in the high school side of things. Philip Smith into the game for Cooper Pierce. Now, I was curious, Scott, if there would be media timeouts tonight. Clearly, there's not. Each team has six timeouts, so no media timeouts tonight. And I'm really surprised about that, but uh, evidently there's... Uh, <laughs> I don't think surely they're live streaming I, this game. I've heard there's another broadcast, but uh, this is the only one that really matters, absolutely, I think. Absolutely. Here's Mockaby into the lane. Now he'll gift outside of the lane, give it off to Bird. Bird, stop, pop, 17-footer, good. Matt O'Brien doesn't mind giving guys tough shots. Clifford knocked it down. Yeah, yeah I don't think Clifford's going to get his as much as Clark is going to get his as well. He's going to find a way good shooters do. Clark has curled around and missed the layup, and then his momentum took him out of bounds as the rebound found Kevin Clark, and it'll go over to Bethel. Again, Kevin Clark just getting to the rim, finding a way, trying to generate that offense, create something inside, and then hey, got to clean the glass. Got to be there. 22-16, Southwestern, 8.22 to go here in the first half. Bird between the circles. He'll go left side to Yukubu. Looking, they'll feed it down to Jonas. Guarded by Clark, offensive foul. Harper Jonas dropped the shoulder, Scott, and Kevin gladly accepted it. Oh, you see it so many times. Kevin Clark, he's got it down to an art, but he just stands his ground and lets... Get low. That's what happened. Yeah, get low and let the guy run over you. If he's going to take that chance, let him buy it. Second foul on Harper Jonas. Artaz did not love the call. Bowl is unguarded. They didn't give it to him. Here's O'Brien with the right hand off the window and in for two. How smooth Whoa. was that off the low block shot? Just beautiful. Twice that different dynamic that Mr. O'Brien gives this team. 24 16. Mockaby deep three. Miss. Rebound Smith. Gives off to Jarvis Jennings. I like what Phillip Smith does on the boards. It gives you that elevation, can really sky for the basketball. Great take by Jarvis, but he misses the shot. Now a foul in the backcourt. 
here on Southwestern, and DB's the first one to pick up Christian Whitaker. Yeah, they get the foul on Dang Bowl as well, and again, we expected a physical contest. We're yep. getting every bit of it. Really no easy plays for anyone. Uh, everyone's having to work so far. 24-16 Southwestern, 7.40 to go first half. First foul on Dang Bull. Richardson will bring it up for the Threshers. Talented freshman in our league, Jared Richardson. Or a junior, I should say, not a freshman. Here's Richardson, spin in the lane. Gives to Whitaker for a three. Miss, rebound came off. Hot Bird runs it down. Yakubu looking to drive. Into Clark, offensive foul. Clark was just outside the arc. Yeah, Kevin paid for that when he gets up with a grimace on his face. You know, that one had to hurt a little bit, but did what it took to do what he had to do for the team. Timeout, Bethel. 7.19 to go here in the first half. We'll take a timeout, a one-minute break. You're listening to Mountain Builder Championship Basketball on Bob FM. Welcome back. That familiar voice you hear, not mine, it's Scott Gurney joining me tonight on the broadcast here on Bob FM. And Hey, uh, early on, Builders led wire to wire at Oklahoma Wesley, and they trailed 2-0 here, but they haven't trailed much here. They've gotten a little eight-point margin, and Bethel's starting to force a, a few things, I feel like. They really are, and, and the sh I think the shooting, the shot selection by those both these teams is going to be critical when this comes down to the final. If it's close, if the Mount Bitters can keep you know, the, the eight, ten-point lead, they just have to keep doing what they're doing. I like taking the ball to the rack. Yep. I like the timeout by Bethel there. I think he noticed, Jason Artaz noticed, his guys were starting to get a little loose with it. Abasolo from behind got it poked away, tried to save it, does, but it's to the Threshers. Bo uh, Bird to the free throw line, plays here to Whitaker. Across the lane, Richardson into the lane. Back to Whitaker and out to Bird. 18 to shoot for the Threshers. Very easy to see the big numbers for the shot clock as you look to either side of the walls. Now they go down low to Maccabi. Abasola with the two fouls. Maccabi in some trouble. Up and O'Brien blocked his shot. Down to three. Bird has to rush one up. That's no good. Rebound. Yakubu kicks it out. Maccabi for three. Got it. That's what happens when you can't pull it in. You didn't have position to get that rebound. Philip Smith tried, but hey, it led to another opportunity, and you get those offensive rebounds. Things bounce your way. It's different. Dang ball with an answer. Whitaker didn't give, didn't respect the shot. He sticks another three. 27-19 SC. Like you said, Dang Bowl, not a big three-point shooter, but finding the range tonight. Hey, he's a senior. This is his last go-around. Here's Bird, left side of the floor. Bethel in the home grays tonight. Maroon numerals. They'll play it to Yakubu. Off the block, guarded by Phillip Smith. 10 to shoot. Yakubu out to Whitaker. Top of the key three. That's good. 27-22 Southwestern. That's how you can close the gap in a hurry if you're left open for open threes. Bull with it right side. Driving into the lane. Couple of shot fakes. Abasolo. Now O'Brien open. His answer missing. O'Brien running it down in the corner. Puts up another three. Good. Andrew O'Brien. No one came out after him. Andrew O'Brien with the answer right back after that. Just being alert enough wow. to keep going after the basketball. Jab, jab, jab. Back and forth we go. Maccabee out on the arc. Over to Richardson. Jared Richardson guarded by Clark. Goes up with the shot. Miss. They're going to get a foul here. I think on Kevin Clark. Yeah, without a doubt, that was on Kevin, just bodying up. But again, not letting you have free access no. to the rim. Not going to give that up. Maybe later in the game when you've got three or four fouls on you, you're going to be able to do it. But right now, Megan Murn at the free throw line. The last two times these teams messed up, met up, Bethel has had the advantage from the free throw line by about mm. 10 percentage points. Southwestern not shooting as well from the free throw line. Different case tonight so far. First free throw good, 30 to 23. One more free throw here for Richardson. And that one's good, 30 to 24 Southwestern. As the builders bring it up. I love not having the TV timeouts, to be honest yeah. with you. I like that you can have the pace of the game, keep going, not slow down. Clark with the right hand, his shot blocked from behind. We're gonna get a foul, Mark Wagers has the call. And who's it against? Bird or It's on Whitaker. Bird, Clifford Bird. Yep, behind, just his first. 
And again, Essie trying to create at the yep. rim. They're just trying to keep moving the ball towards the rim. It funnels down. Earn him at the line as he's shooting a good mark, especially for this gentleman right here, Mr. Kevin Clark, 85% from the line. Someone's taking our picture. We're a little blurry there on the uh, photo. <laughs> it's from way, way up, there, up there. In the nosebleed section. 31-24, <laughs> Kevin hits the first free throw. Second free throw, good. 32-24, builders by eight. A lead that they've had, Scott, for about the last four or five minutes of eight, six to eight points. Yes, they have. And just kind of keeping that pressure on, staying ahead. They've done a great job on the, on the defensive glass, I think, and being able to create opportunities at the other end. Bird got into the front court. Now step back from the free throw line. That's no good. Again, Bull makes you shoot tough shots. He does. He's just, he's just so athletic. O'Brien into the front court. Builders trying to get their biggest lead of the game here. I don't think they've led by doubles, have they? I don't believe they have. Here's Bull with it left side. Bull, hesitation dribble. Clark was open for a moment. They missed him. Now Bull hung up. And a no look to Pierce, who missed it, got his own rebound, and puts it in. How about Mr. Pierce just staying after the basketball? No quitting that young man. Just keep cutting to the hoop. Just keep funneling it in. 34-24 Southwestern. Bull. Guarding Bird. Bird off a screen to the baseline. Lobs it and a jam to Whitaker. Well done right there. That was a pretty play. You got to give credit where credit due. When it's Purdy, <laughs> it's Purdy. Beautifully done. Here's O'Brien down to the baseline. Plays out to Pierce. Pierce hung up by Mockaby. Now Bull with it. Constant movement by this builder offense. Dang will fire another three. That one's no good. Trey White knocks the rebound out of bounds. Good hustle by him, but it'll go to Bethel. Yeah, I came flying in, saw that Dang was going to pump the three up, just started moving quickly in advance. I feel like, like I could honestly hit off Bethel player first. Can we go to replay now? We probably won't hear. <laughs> Bull looks like he feels it from the arc. He doesn't normally shoot up a lot of threes, but he's two for three tonight. Yeah, only a 30% free throw or shooter from beyond the arc, but... Feeling like you said. Richardson to the rim. That shot no good. Rebound Southwestern. Kevin Clark up the floor. Clark explodes to the rim and in. What a play. That was one on two, Scott. It was just a blow by play by Kevin Clark and finding a way to get to the rim. And a block here called on Trey White. Boy, he took some, uh, took, that's a tough call. Either way you call it there. Uh, he wasn't really set, but I don't know if he didn't take a shoulder to the chest either. He probably did, but I think he was inside the ring. Not again, on the shot, though. Again, bang, bang Ooh, plays. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just the pace is insane how fast we're moving up and down. I don't know what time we've, we've got here, but a uh, one-on-one opportunity at the free throw line for Bethel here. Carmelo Yakubu. First free throw is good. He'll get the bonus. 36-27 SC. Abasolo into the game for Dang Bull. You saw Dang at Cowley. Uh, what, do you, what do you see different from his game, or is he the same? Absolutely nothing. That's, that's, he's so creative. That's the way he was at the JUCO level. He just brought that to the next level and brought, I think, his level of play up, but doing the fa same things, just more successful at it. It's got to be fun for you. Uh, you covered Cowley, and yeah. you see Kevin and Dang doing what they're doing here at Southwestern. Absolutely, and you throw Cooper Pierce in yep. a bunch as well, and uh, and then you can see Andrew Burgos doing his oh, thing yeah. as well. It's a uh, it's a treat for me. I can't tell you. O'Brien open for three, and it's good, and the Mongols lead it by twelve. Yeah, and then you got this guy that is just phenomenal. He just waits for his opportunity, then strikes. He's like a cobra. Out yeah, there. his motor's tremendous. Here's Whitaker. Out to Yakubu, a little shot fake, now Bird, guarded by Solo. Bird got past Solo. Trey with two fouls, couldn't do much there, and an easy two for Bird. Yeah, it was. Again, Bird's going to get his, there's no doubt about it. He's so athletic. I, trying to stop him is about like trying to stop Kevin. 39-29 Southwestern. Clark in the corner for three, fouled. Bird called for the foul. And Clark will shoot three, and that'll be two fouls on Bird. Yeah, Clark couldn't get his feet underneath him. That was a dangerous play, put Kevin Clark in a really bad position. Luckily, he bounces well. Clifford, uh, a great, he's been around. He's seen a number of these games, Scott. You've called him a couple of times. He's going to ask the referee what he did there, but I think Mark Wager is going to tell him he didn't let him land. <laughs> and I've seen Mark before. He's done some Juco games as well. Usually he doesn't give a player that kind of time of day. It's kind of like, let's move on. Clark hits the first free throw. He'll shoot two more, 40 to 29. A number of threshers now with two fouls. 
And Bird can't check out yet because there's two more free throws. Whitaker's running out. Fellas, we've got to wait here. But again, I like the game plan of Matt O'Brien. He's saying, let's take it to him in the paint. Let's see what we can get to happen there. And if we can get some three action because of that on the kick out. Keep working inside out, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's all about moving the basketball. You talk about Andrew O'Brien. You see a lot of great talent at the JUCO level. Here's a 6-7 kind of hybrid who's a, who can play a 1 through a 5 for Southwestern. Now, your thoughts on what you see from Andrew O'Brien night in and night out? I, I think he could play at the JUCO level very easy <laughs> with the with the 6 6'8", six, 6'9", six, 6'10", six, guys that you see at the JUCO level. He's just so physical. And again, he's got a motor that never stops. Three for three for Clark. And we'll get a cheap one here on Kevin. That'll be his second with 2.26 to go. And Matt O'Brien with the decision. He's going to bring Trey White in. Although O'Brien never afraid to play guys with two fouls in the first half. Oh, evidently not. It just keep the pressure up. And Kevin Dugge usually doesn't get those cheap yeah. fouls. You know, at that time he just made a little bit of a mistake. The player ran into him. Both hands were up and he got it. Nick Bonner shooting a one and one. Misses. Rebound Abasolo for Southwestern. Speaking of playing with two fouls, Abasolo is doing just that. I love Abasolo. I just like the way he goes at his work. He's just business-like. Fairly goes local. Gets done. Mulvane yep. kid. Mulvane. Yep. Here's O'Brien, right of the key. Backing in, nothing doing there. Whips into the corner, too tall. Rarely do you say that, too tall for Dang Bull. Yeah, because he's got springs, even though you look at his calves and there doesn't seem to be there was much there, but he can sure sky. So Bonner will bring it up, plays here to Richardson. Richardson to the free throw line, plays it back to Yukubu. Now left side, Bonner. Bonner into the lane, out to Javen Hutton, and now Mockaby. Mockaby guarded by Pierce. Mockaby into the lane, kick out, and Hutton. Hutton trying to drive on Bull, stumbling, fumbling, Bull on the ground. He's able to throw it off of Dang. It'll stay with the Threshers, but there's that Dang Bull flu that he throws on uh, offensive players. Absolutely. He is so good at defensive pressure, and he just stays on you. He is like He's like a wolf. Once he gets a hold of you, man, he's on you. He's the pit bull. <laughs> he's like a wolf. He is. He just... Look out, I'll come get you. You'll never know what's going to happen, but I'm going to get you. Hidalgo into the game for Abasolo, and now Whitaker comes in. So the Threshers go a little bigger here with Whitaker and Yakubu out there. The inbounds to Whitaker. Hands it off to Mockaby. Mockaby, fadeaway two-point shot. High arcer, no good. Rebound O'Brien. Again, SC in the best position to get the defensive rebound. Dang bull to the rim, stumbling, lost it. Hidalgo saves it for SC. Here's O'Brien, top of the key, three, good! <laughs> O'Brien for three. Bomb builders lead, 45-29. Oh my goodness, Andrew O'Brien just throwing daggers out there. Darts just up there, the right? Yard darts out there. He's got the GPS honed in tonight. Builder crowd on their feet making noise. Builders by 16, Hutton. And we'll get a trip here on Dang Bull. He tried to negotiate the Mockaby screen and trying to get around that. He ended up tripping uh, Javen Hutton. Yeah, that's just his second. But again, just, just hard play. Just trying to get around the defensive block off the ball screen. And unfortunately, Dang has to collect that one. But Hot shooting for Southwestern. The Mound Builders right now are shooting 35 39 percent seems better than that from the arc 43 percent how many is that seven seven of 16 brendan sweeney our sid here seven of 16 scott shooting 43 percent is that what you said yeah 43 percent hey you know that's that's uh, about seven points uh, higher than what you're used to shooting during the season so keep first the, free throw good by hutton keep the foot pedal smashed 45 30 second free throw good by hutton and nothing pleases a crowd more when uh, he tells them to shush, knows that the builder crowd are getting to him. You know, that's a, a tip of the cap for the builder fans. Getting in the head. Hutton guarding Clark, 45-31 Southwestern. Hidalgo setting a screen, and Hutton just clobbered Hidalgo, and Zach will shoot two free throws. I always think when a player reacts to the crowd, You've gotten, you've done what you want to do, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You know you've gotten into his head. He's responding bit. to you, so he's paying attention to it, and he lets you know that he is. And then he picks up his first foul here, trying to work through a Hidalgo screen. No easy chore there. Double bonus for Southwestern. 
What do you got on Hidalgo? I was just looking at numbers. That he's, First free throw good. You know, from the free throw line, that surprises me that he's only about 40, 44%, 7 of 16. Hasn't Wasn't been good for, early. For a big man, he's just seems like he'd be there more, more often. Of course, remember, he didn't get into the starting lineup. Well, Hidalgo thought he was going to miss that free throw. He sprinted across the line before it hit the iron, and it actually went in, but it won't count. It won't count. It's a lane violation. 46-31. Remember, Hidalgo wasn't getting a ton of minutes uh, until about mid-January. Hutton will let it roll to half court. And now Hutton with it in the front court. Off a of Whitaker screen. Kick out here, Yakubu. Yakubu into the lane. Got Hidalgo in the air. Missed the shot. Rebound, Hidalgo. Got it pulled away from Yakubu. Up with the right hand, miss. Rebound, Pierce for SC. Yes, just again, just battling underneath for every opportunity. Cooper Pierce just Love. sticking with it. The gentle giant. You look at his baby face. You don't think he's got that <laughs> fire in there, but he does. Yeah, if you look at his two younger brothers, they look older than he does. <laughs> Here's Pierce with it on the arc, trying to get into the lane. Plays in the corner to White. Nine to shoot. Builders by 15. Now Solo. Solo. Here at the top. Hung up. Gives to O'Brien. O'Brien looks. Fires up a shot at the shot clock buzzer. Wouldn't have counted. He missed it anyway. Yep. Good defensive possession there by Bethel. Absolutely, and 11 seconds left to go in the first half. And Here comes Bird. Bird will come back in for the Threshers. Mound Builders by 15 here at halftime. We're just talking about a shot clock issue here. I don't know why. It's 11.2 seconds. So Justin Souser over there visiting with... Of course, I love what our league does. Uh, you got three referees and you got a fourth referee here. He does, uh, I don't. I, I know that gentleman, he does a lot of games. They're gonna go back to the video review here, I guess, and just see if they got the clock exactly right, I guess. I, Matt O'Brien is never afraid to use timeout, Scott. He hasn't had to use one here in this first half. His team has come out sharp again. Again, and, and you should. Why break that pace up? Why break that tempo up? If the guys are playing well, and they're moving with it, and they're scoring off of it, they've got great defensive pressure on the other end, why would you want to slow that down? It bugs me to death at the JUCO level. you got the momentum going your way. You hit a big three and a timeout. And it's like, why? It's such it's a, a letdown. It, it, it's, it's a momentum killer to me. And, and You know, I love taking uh, the, the media timeouts, but uh, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Just like this tonight, let's go. Let's keep it moving. Mon Builders, let's see, they've got two referees looking at the clock now. Don't forget to tune in each and every weekday morning for the uh, morning mixtape. Brett Copeland, Brady Bowman, all your news, weather, sports, community calendar. Uh, they do it all, and uh, it's all local, Scott. I just love local radio. Absolutely. Listen to every morning on the way to work. Local guys talking about local events in South Central Kansas, North Central Oklahoma. Clock stays at 11-2. Inbounds to Bird. He's across half court with eight. Bird off a screen. Bird at the free throw line. Bird in the lane, going up, shot, no, rebound. Southwestern had it, lost it. Bird misses a gimme, and that's the end of the first half. Builders dodge a little bullet there. They did dodge a little bit of a bullet, but again, monsters on the glass on the defensive end, and, and it has really paid off so far for the mound builders, leading it 46 to 31. I love Adelgo in the paint. He really gets it done. Him or Cooper Pierce have been right there. Uh, just just a phenomenal effort by, by the entire staff right now. From Matt O'Brien, the way he's got these guys yep. set up, the substitutions, keeping fresh legs in there, but it doesn't let down on the quality of basketball player on the floor. Bench has been playing well for Southwestern. They're having another good one here tonight. Scott and I are going to return. we got stats and a whole lot more to talk about as all of the women's awards are going to be announced here at halftime of the men's game. It's all... Uh, fun to see the, some of the brass of the KCAC here at Hartman Arena. Let's take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back. 46-31 Southwestern on the rail here at halftime on Bob FM. Kurt Caden, Scott Gurney, Eddie Carmichael in the studio. A complete wrap of tonight's game. You can hear it tomorrow morning at 7.55 when I join uh, Brett and Brady on the morning mixtape. Uh, we're getting ready for the second half, Scott. If you're Southwestern, what do you think Matt O'Brien? I mean, he's not a big halftime speech guy, but what do you think the key for SC here in the second half is? 
I think the key is you just got to keep getting to the rim. And I think he said, you know what, we're not changing the thing. We're going to keep the pressure on. You guys keep battling on the boards. Create second chance opportunities when we can. And let's free up some shooters from the outside and light this thing up here tonight. If you're, if you're Jason Artaz, what do you think his message was <laughs> to the Threshers? You know, I think you've you got to be better at the free throw line. And you got to find a way to make shots. They've missed some real bunnies. Yeah. The lid has been on. For the lid has been on the basket for him down here at this end. We'll see. Here we go, second half. Mon Builders are 20 minutes away from a tournament championship. Oklahoma Wesleyan, the regular season winner. Kansas Wesleyan not getting the auto berth. Here's Harper Jonas, stopped by Clark. Now another drive up with the right hand, missing. Rebound, Jonas fought it back for the Threshers. Yeah, those are defensive rebounds that they got in the first half. Got to keep after the basketball. Bird starts left, comes back right. He wants to go left, up with the left hand. He's so good with it and a nice finish. Yeah, it really was a nice finish. Just stayed with the basketball. and uh, Second chance point. Yeah, second chance point. Didn't duck away from contact either. 46-33 Southwestern. O'Brien out on the arc. Catch, shoot, three, miss. Pierce had the rebound, and they're going to say it's off of Cooper. I thought Jonas got away with made a little bit of a tug there, and referee let him go. Yeah, I think he did. got Cooper out of position and yanked the ball away from him still. I think the main right call did tip off Cooper's hands. So the Thrashers within 13 bring it up the floor. Bird to Jonas. Jonas into the lane, up with the right hand, and good. They're going right after Kevin Clark right now. They really are. They're trying to start that run. The momentum swinging a little bit. Got to find a way to get a stop here. Pierce with it, Matt O'Brien calls out a play. 46-35 SC. Thresher fans woken up. Bowl gives to O'Brien. Left of the key, hands it off to Clark. Clark, this play worked really well at Bartlesville, but really well defended by Yakubu. Now Clark, a spin move to the rim with the right hand still finishes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you're not gonna stop him. He's gonna find a way to beat you. He gets the mismatch, Scott, and then he just resets and goes to work. And now Jonas, offensive foul. That'll be his third. That's a critical foul against Bethel. It is, and that's the third charging foul that Kevin Clark yeah. has been able to take here. and Just so opportunistic. I mean, you, 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 you rave on the scoring, but there's so many more pieces to Kevin Clark's game. Oh, absolutely. His defense is phenomenal. And, you know, you got to credit a lot of that to how uh, his dad brought yeah. him up in that. But Coach Tommy DeSalm at Cali at the time, now at Hutch, you know, he, he forced that. He preached defensive pressure. Hidalgo from Clark over to Bull. Bull trying to get his way out of a double team. Plays it down to Hidalgo, bobbles it. Now Zach with it out here to Pierce. Right wing three. Get in there. It is Cooper Pierce for three. There's that momentum breaker right there. Four in a row by Bethel. Now five in a row from Southwestern. Three-pointer Jonas. Missed. Long rebound. Todd had it. It ricochets over to Yukubu. Takes it to the rim and in for two. Yeah, nice baseline drive. Put the ball down, put his shoulder down, went right to the rim. 51-37 Southwestern, 17-33 to go. Bull coming here to the near side. Again, giving to O'Brien. Hand off to Clark. Clark, Bird stays on, engaged this time. Pierce, another, could it? No, he missed this three. Rebound, Bird, and almost tiptoed his way out of bounds. Yeah, I like the shot selection. You have an opportunity to sink one, you got to do it. Bird, muscling, missing, rebound, dang bowl. Referee's Again. letting him go a little bit. Yep, I'm getting after the defensive glass. Pierce kicks out to Bowl and a great read, Yakubu. He'll take it and flush it down. 51-39, great read by the yeah. freshman. Great court awareness on the other end. Just saw the pass, stepped in the pass in the lane, swiped it wide right away, and then went coast to coast to score the basketball. Not a big question why he's the freshman of the year. No, none whatsoever in my mind. Clark, guarded by Bird, plays here to O'Brien. Deep three, missing. Pierce kept the rebound alive, pulls it away from Bird. Clark, over to Ball, corner three. That's offline. Pierce, now the rebound, Maccabee. And O'Brien gets shoved into the bench by Jalen Todd. Here's Bird driving. He'll kick out, Puss, stolen by O'Brien, who was just on the deck a moment ago. He was, but he kept his head in the game. Put himself in a position to get the basket. O'Brien up the floor, off the window for two. <laughs> Timeout Southwestern after that kiss off the window. The gentle kiss. Yeah, the gentle kiss. Defense into offense. O'Brien 
with the pick and then setting that up on the other end. It's a thing of beauty. 53-39, Matt O'Brien didn't use a timeout in the first half. I don't know if he loves the opportunities Bethel's getting right now on second chances, so a chance to still up 14, kind of reroute his group here. But you know, it was kind of a, a kind of a hit and miss in the first half as well. They had their opportunities, then they made them count when they did, but more opportunities went for not. Missed shots underneath the basket. We call them bunny shots. The little ones are just taking a little bunny hop and lay them off the glass. Did not fall, I'm sure, the way they wanted them to, but SE at the time being able to take advantage of that. Not much difference so far in this one. We'll see what happens. A lot of time left on the clock. Yeah, if you're a Mound Builder fan, that 16-11 feels like three days. If you're a Bethel fan, uh, you'd like maybe a little more. But yeah, absolutely. They're going to keep battle. That's what I love. Uh, this league that's been like this all year, Scott. I mean, there's just no give up in teams, and the coaches do such a great job, and the athletes are getting better and better in our league. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think you've got to credit the coaches. You know, their kids are different nowadays than when, yeah. when we play. There's things you can do and things you can't do. Time is, is is such a valuable commodity, the time you're able to spend with these young people and to be able to instill the culture, the want to in these kids and develop them the way you want to develop them. It, it's a big job. It's a big, big job. They've both done a phenomenal job. I want to piggyback on what you said in a moment. Out of the timeout, Yakubu from the free throw line into the lane, almost got it dug out of there. Now a tough fadeaway shot, no good. Clark the rebound for SC. And Bird will pick him up immediately. 50. Yeah. 339 SC. Bull driving, going up, right hand overdid it. Rebound loose, and Bird's got it for the Threshers. Bird up the floor, now a two on one, takes it himself, basket, and a foul on Andrew O'Brien. And boy, Clifford Bird with that left hand just swooped that way outside, and Andrew couldn't reach it. Yeah, Clark, Clark's asking for an elbow. Kevin's telling Mark Wagers, I took a shot. Yeah, no doubt. And the referees can go back and look. They can go look at it. Yeah. Replay. So Bird is going to get one. It's 53-41. I didn't see where that occurred, Scott. Did you? Right at the top of the key and not Kevin past the free throw line. So that'd be nice to see. I would like to see that myself to see exactly what happened there. You know, the KCAC a few years ago didn't have this technology. Now we have instant replay. And uh, they can go back and uh, take a look. And I, I like it. I don't think it was overused this year either at our league. You know, I was really surprised when I saw him use it for the first time. And I was like sitting in the stands going, they are looking at replay. That is awesome. And I think they need to. I think there's there's times when things aren't seen, aren't caught, yeah. that need to be. Uh, now, it's not like a Division One game where they go right. to replay about every 10 yeah. seconds to make sure there was a tenth of a second. Right. But th they seem to go flagrant stuff like this if it occurred they can go back and look if it's not there well now they're gonna mark wagers and justin souser they've seen i think they've seen something because they're huddling now at half court bird you know is going to get a shot here but now they got to decipher what happened souser's pointing over this way they're going to come over to the announcer's table and oh, talk gonna, to the TV they won't guys. tell us but So we'll find out. It's a pretty long explanation. So something has occurred here, I feel like. But everyone's in the lane. So that tells me maybe nothing occurred, Scott. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. They didn't see anything to uh, to stop the pace huh. of the play or, or to change their mind. Hey, they took a look, right? That's what you have that ability. That's great. Maybe they'll keep a better eye on it for now on out. Bird's free throw, good. So it turns out to be a, an extended three-point play by Bird, and the Threshers are within 11. 53-42 Southwestern. Pierce with it in front of the Mound Builder bench. Builders from left to right in the road blacks tonight. Here's O'Brien looking to work off of Clark's screen. Now they got the switch they wanted. Give to Pierce here on the near side, guarded by Yakubu. Clark into the lane, up with the shot, and good over three players. Just guarded. Everybody with their hands in the air and just could not stop the shot from Kevin Clark. 55-42 Southwestern. You couldn't have defended that any better. I don't know what Jason Artaz could do different there. Bird going to work off a high ball screen into the lane. Over Pierce, no good. Cooper might have got a piece of that. 
And you, I think you got a couple of fingertips on that one. Jarvis Jennings over to Pierce. O'Brien in the corner to Bowl. Guarded there by Yakubu. Now hit back here to the near side. Jennings likes to go left. Over to O'Brien. Good shot fake. Gives off. Clark runs down an errant pass in the corner. Builders shot clock down to 10. Bull driving and is tugged down. Flagrant. Intentional foul on Yakubu. That'll be two free throws and the basketball, Scott Absolutely. Gurney. Absolutely. Just grabbed him on the arm. He yanked him to the floor. And immediately the official says, no, yeah. that's intentional. I love, I love that they made that call there. Yakubu was beat. He came rushing out at Dang. Dang, he's a senior, Scott. He saw a rushing a t defender. He took off to the rim. Absolutely. He just saw that lane squeeze right down through it. Kevin Clark at the line. Clark hits the first. He'll shoot one more. The foul on Dang occurred on the floor, so it'll be Mound Builder basketball after these two Clark free throws, if I'm not mistaken. Kevin Clark, look at the little flex to his teammates as he, after that's four in a row after the Bethel got it to 11 this is the same script I saw Saturday at Bartlesville absolutely Kevin Clark may not rack him up from long distance tonight but he's gonna get his oh. he'll find a way Yakubu out of the game now the inbounds comes into O'Brien what a swing this could be for Southwestern a pass over the defense nice catch here by Solo now Clark with it guarded by Bird Bird, such a good defender. Now Clark into the lane, up with the right hand, miss. Rebound tip towards the sideline, run down by Richardson. And here's Jared Richardson, little between the legs pass to Mockaby. Into the lane, Bird, a little shot fake to the rim and a little teardrop in there for two. Little teardrop finger roll and you just it's pretty to watch. Bowl open three, got it! Dang Bowl with the answer. <laughs> 60 to 44. What has got into Dang Bowl tonight? Wow. That's what Jason Artaz would like uh, to know. Bird, tough fadeaway shot, missing. Rebound O'Brien. And he'll give it off to Clark. Clark from left to right. No look to Jennings down inside. Jennings misses. Oh. Rebound Bethel. With the left, left hand and kind of out of shape there, but I liked it. And he had room. He had time, too. Richardson in the corner. Nice move on Bull. Takes it to the rim. Basket good. And Jennings trying to take a charge under the cup. That'll never work. Yep. A chance for three for Richardson. Good yep. answer by Bethel. Yep. Very good answer. And just, uh, yeah, you're never going to get that call. And it, it, no. I don't know if those are worth it or not because that's, that could be very painful on both sides of it. Yeah. Jarvis going to check out. Oh, he had a chance to give the Builders an 18-point lead. Just needed to gather, and he usually does. He may have rushed that a little bit in the moment. First foul on Jennings. He checks out. Richardson to shoot one. His free throw is good. Three-point play, Bethel. 60-47, to 47, Southwestern. Both teams content to try to make it happen in the paint. Hidalgo, ball screen, didn't really develop. Now a handoff to Solo. Abba Solo, left to the key. Plays over to Bull. They got Clark now and Richardson. Here's Dang to the rim, and they lost it on the way up. Would have had a layup. Here's oh, Richardson. Easily. Over to Hutton. Hutton, extremely quick, into the lane. Tough shot. Rebound, Hidalgo. Just out of shape on that shot. Ahead to Solo. Solo to the rim. Layup good for SC, the transition. Oh, absolutely. Quick transition out to Alba Solo. Knew right what to do with it. But how about the heads up play? No one with court awareness, no one where your guys are at. Just take it in there. 62 47, Southwestern. Hutton dribbles between the rings, gives to Bird. Left of the key. Bird plays to Mockaby. Clark jumped in there to poke it away. It was really a 50 50 ball, but Clark will get his third foul. Yeah, that could be. I don't know. It just depends on what Matt O'Brien decides to do. Do you pull Clark at this point? Let him settle a bit, get that energy back. He had Trey White at the scores table anyway, so problem is now Clark leaves with three fouls and not two, but rarely have I, only once have I seen Clark foul out of a game. What an inbounds to Whitaker for a jam. Oh, well, you can't fake the funk on a nasty dunk, and I'm <laughs> telling you what, and that was sick. 62-49, Southwestern. There's been a couple of really sexy junks by the Threshers tonight. There has. Trey Abasolo will call a timeout here for Southwestern. It's a full timeout. We'll take it. 12 18 to go. Mound Builders lead by 13. A one minute timeout. Builder basketball championship style on Bob FM. Hartman Arena here in Wichita. 
the number four seeded Mound Builders, the number three seed Threshers. Both teams finished 16 and six, but it was the regular season win by Bethel at Oklahoma Wesleyan that gave the Threshers the tiebreaker. But lo and behold, both teams meet up here. They split during the regular season and they're just laying it all out there. How poetic is it? I mean, and what a battle. It's such a treat, such a treat to be able to see this. 62-49 Southwestern out of the Matt O'Brien timeout. Each team still has four. What's fun about this event too, you see all the SIDs and ADs from all the schools in our league. O'Brien plays left side, Abasolo, hounded there by Hutton. Abasolo plays to Clark. Clark, it's tough fadeaway. Uh, not tough, not for Kevin Clark. Not for him, just made enough space. The step back, easy drop, Six, makes it look easy. 64-49. So far, a very similar script from Saturday. Bird, boy, they got Whitaker pinned down inside. Trey White ducked in there and dug it out of there. A steal for SC. Oh, and it's just taking advantage of those opportunities now. Can you keep adding on? Yes, can you keep adding, can you make more space? Hidalgo coming with the screen. Clark got around his man to the rim. No, but a foul on Christian Whitaker for Bethel. And Clifford Burt's telling him, hey, I had it all defended fine there. You can't come down yep. with that block shot and donk him in the head. <laughs> I like that terminology. Donk. Donk. Well, you gave, me, you, you gave me bits tonight. Bits. I didn't know bits. You didn't know bits. That's, a, right. that's a good one. Here's Kevin Clark at the line. His first free throw is good. Builders are perfect. What was that game? We, wasn't there a game that Southwestern as a team went 18 of 18, or was it just Clark who went 18 of 18? <laughs> Kevin went 18 of 18. <laughs> a game earlier this year. I hope Brendan didn't put the jinx on. Nope, he didn't. Nope. Kevin's better than jinxes as he plays for the jinx, and now Clark checks out. 66-49, yep. again the Builders by 17. Again, just increasing that lead. They've, they've been able to answer every run by the Threshers so far. And again, Dangbo comes in for Kevin yep. Clark. The pressure, the physicality, the skill level doesn't drop. Bonner into the game for Bethel, gives off to Yakubu. Yakubu. Looking to drive on Hidalgo. Got a step, now got O'Brien in the air. Missed the shot. O'Brien tried to avoid contact, but he was invited there by Yakubu. So the foul on AOB, and I think that's going to be his third. It is. So that's a difference maker down the stretch huge. as well. But I've also seen O'Brien play very well with four fouls. <laughs> the Bethany about game. 11 minutes left to go. <laughs> it seemed like how much time's left, and you got four, and he's still playing him. First free throw good by Yukubu. 66-50. Pierce and Clark, the Arcidians, back in for Mulvane. And let's see, uh, Trey is from Eastern Kansas. I, can't, I forgot Trey White's hometown. It, like, Caney, I think it is. Caney? Caney, Kansas. Oh, there you go. One more free throw for the freshman of the year for Bethel College. Yakubu, his free throw is perfect. Nice looking stroke. Yes, it is. 66-51, Southwestern. Other Again, can you continue to answer? Just, yeah. Isn't that the key? Just keeping the pressure on the opponent. Absolutely. But you've got to get to that point. Bird guarding Clark. Clark out here on the well off the arc. Kevin with the right hand looking to get a switch. Now into a double team. Steps through. Up with the shot. Missing. And the rebound to Bird. Bird on the run. Bird, nice pass right wing. Richardson driving up with the shot. Bothered by Hidalgo. Ball tipped around. Abasola with it and a foul on Bethel. Hidalgo straight up and down. That verticality, Scott. I love that referees let bigs do that. Absolutely. And you've got to. They earn that. You, you tell them that's what they can do and that's all they can do. And when they do it, you got to reward them. And Abasola, how about just staying after the basketball? You know, knowing where to be. Seeing that thing come off the rim and knowing it ain't going, you got to do something with it. Third foul on Bird, probably of no circumstance right now. Uh, Jason Artaz isn't going to take that guy out no. at this point of the game. Absolutely not. Here's O'Brien up top, guarded by Yakubu. Boy, Bird just grabbing Kevin if you watch that action. Here's Abasolo into the lane. Spins oh. up with the shot. No good. Got his own rebound. And Abasolo dribbles out of trouble. Did I that, think the builder's got a reset. Did that hit the rim? I don't think it did. I don't think it did either, but... We'll take it. Ten to shoot for Southwestern. Bull now with it. Bull trying to get in up with the right hand. Oh, Somehow oh, wilded in. So pretty. 
So gifted of a shooter. The body control is phenomenal. 68-51 Southwestern. We stand in awe. Richardson out to Mockaby. Mockaby trying a three. No. Rebound O'Brien. Forced it. Just trying to make something happen now, and that's where they're at. And that's the pressure Southwestern has kept on Oklahoma Wesleyan Saturday, keeping on Bethel here today. Pierce along the baseline, and a foul here on Mockaby. It'll be the fifth team foul on Bethel. Mockaby thought he hooked him. Again, Bristol didn't see it that way. You always see great runs, right? But what Southwestern's been able to do, we're going to get a timeout. Let's just keep it right here, Scott. And again, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but they, they keep coming up with answers. They don't have the long dry spell. And for a team to come back from double digits, you need you need a cold spell from Southwestern. And Kevin Clark with 23 right now. Andrew O'Brien, 18. Dang Bowl, 16. And I love Cooper Pierce, nine points. Welcome points from Cooper Pierce tonight. A absolutely. But what he's been able to do, his presence in the paint. He's so calm. He just never, he and Clark never look rattled out there no, to me. they don't. The confidence they played with is phenomenal. Out of the timeout, Bull looking to drive. Good defense by Bonner. Spin move, Bull up. He got hit on the arm. Boy, dang, just kept going with the spin, and it's lightning quick. What a treat to see him play at Southwestern. <laughs> just that, just so close. Not having to make a big trip. You know, being able to stay in the community and Great be connected. Kid. Absolutely. You couldn't ask for better. Two years ago, I remember Matt O'Brien. It was summertime before Dang's junior year, and he said, I'm... I'm going to meet Dang Bowl, and we'll see if we can get him here to Southwestern. And, boy, what a fit. When you have a guy that just takes so much pride in his defense. Absolutely. And then has an offensive night. He hasn't had a ton of them this year. This is welcome for Southwestern. Such a leader, quiet leader, knocking down free throws. The Mound Builders have their biggest lead of the night here at 19, 70 to 51. 17 for Dang Bowl tonight. Playing with two fouls. And guarding Clifford Bird. That yes. takes a lot of energy. That takes a lot of energy. Forcing someone else from Bethel to rise up. Here's Bonner. He'll hand it off to Yakubu. Yakubu into the lane. Going up and in. O'Brien with the three fouls knows better, doesn't yep. he? Yes, he does. That's intelligence right there. Just shows you basketball IQ right there. I don't need to foul here. Those two points aren't going to kill us. But my fourth foul might. His fourth foul fourth foul will keep him on the bench and he's too valuable a player. Trey White driving in, nothing there. Kicks out to Bull. Bull and a foul here on Yakubu who didn't like the call but boy what a sport. He immediately picks up Dang off the deck and that's the sixth, seventh team foul. Dang to shoot one and one. That's that's the player that Dang Bull is. He creates opportunities for himself to score whether it's at the free throw line or at the rim or from now beyond the arc but he makes you make mistakes and he takes advantage of them. Clark on the bench right now getting a nice rest. A one and one for Dang Bull, 70 to 53 Southwestern. Free throw from Bull is good. This kid, whatever he had for breakfast today, I think he should do it <laughs> for the next week or two. No doubt, I, I think I need to find out what that is. <laughs> He My has goodness. been on target with his shooting tonight. 71-53 SC. One more free throw for senior Dang Bull. Second one is just not even touching iron, Scott. Phenomenal. The mound builder shooting from the free throw line. Here's Bird quickly up the floor. Plays to Yukubu. Left side, it goes Bonner. Quick move on White. Takes it to the rim. Miss. Bull had the rebound. He lost it. It's out of bounds off of SC, and I think that's the right call. Yeah, it very well could have been. There was... Multiple SC players around. So I love how players now just wave their fingers like, go check the replay. Nah, they're not going to check the replay on every tip ball. No. Bethel has it. Inbounds Mockaby, picked up immediately by O'Brien. Mockaby into the lane, going up right hand, no good. Smith pulls the rebound away from Bonner. And Southwestern with it. Smith sowing that strength. Smith trying to do a blow by. Up, no kick out. Trey White for three. Miss. Rebound Jonas, and a pass to Yakubu. O'Brien went for the steal. He instead gets his fourth foul with 8.28 to go. Mound Builders by 19. And I think O'Brien lost his balance on there. Yeah. He just kind of fell into that foul, and he's going to have a chance to uh, get a little bit of a breather, well-deserved. Like you said, though, he went 10 and a half minutes against Bethany down in that game, 
with four fouls and never picked up a fifth. Just, so we'll see him again. It just shows his basketball IQ, what he means to this team. Father James O'Brien, coach AD. Here's Mockaby hounded by Pierce. Now he got a step on him and will get a foul. Nice block shot by Cooper, but it was pretty physical to the window. It was physical, and but they've done that all night long. Yeah. Don't let them have free opportunities. Don't get, let them give them the easy ones. Make them earn it. Well, and Scott, I feel like they don't give up the easy ones. You just don't get that. You know, you make a couple of free throws is great, but you don't get that big finish in the crowd. Right. I mean, right. no one goes that crazy over free throws unless it's in the final seconds. Yeah, right. It's, it, <laughs> you don't give your fan base the opportunity to have a little medicine in them, yeah. you know, that adrenaline shot. Here comes, well, here's an adrenaline shot. Kevin Clark back into the game for Southwestern. First free throw good for Maccabi. 72-54 Southwestern. Second free throw, boy, Mockaby. I feel like he could probably sit there at the line all day long, Scott, yeah, and pretty, make free throws. Pretty smooth stroke. He's got eight. Now Bethel. Oklahoma Wesleyan went to the full court press the entire second half. Bethel's deciding here at 8.06, we got to try something. Inbounds to Abasolo. Back to Bull. Bull navigating, waiting for a double. It doesn't come. He's into the front court. Bull guarded by Bird. Where's Kevin Clark? Mockaby switched off of him to Bonner. Here's Hidalgo looking to set a screen. Good defense by Bird, poked it away. Now Dang with the right hand, takes it down in. Feeds, oh, a no look to Hidalgo, threw it behind him, a turnover. Yakubu with it, Yakubu crashes in, offensive foul! Fourth time tonight, Scott Gurney. Kevin Clark has taken a charge. <laughs> He just finds himself in the right place at the right time, sets up in the right spot, takes the charge. Dude is just, wow, just grit, just true grit. 72-56 it remains. Four fouls on Yakubu, but at this juncture, he's not coming out. Although Jalen Todd comes to the scorer's table. Once you get to about six minutes, Matt O'Brien turns into Mariano Rivera with his sets. <laughs> He knows how to close, and they may be starting it now, Scott. Here's Clark with it. They got a number of sets out of this action. Clark, left wing, guarded by Bird, off the screen, stop, pop, free throw line, money, Kevin Clark. Phenomenal Kevin Clark now with 25 earned buckets. 74-55, Bird to the rim, up with the shot, got it to go. Went in amongst the trees, and Smith went high up in the air, couldn't get to it. 74-57. Inbounds here to Solo. Plays back to Bull. Builders got plenty of practice at the press on Saturday. Bull into the front court, almost lost it. Now in some trouble, and Matt O'Brien sniffs it. He'll call the timeout. I thought there was a foul right before the timeout was called, but a smart, smart yep. decision there. You got him. Yep. Well, you don't want to give a turnover and a run out. Again, just yep. managing. Uh, Matt O'Brien knows how to manage a game, especially when his team's the lead, tr lead car. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think at this point, that's what you have to do. You've got that comfortable lead. Obviously, you have to keep your foot on the accelerator because you don't want the Threshers to get any type of run out yeah. of this and build any of that momentum. They found a way to squash it all game long. Don't change your game plan now. It's worked. Kevin Clark, four charges taken, Scott. I mean, just phenomenal. When you have a, tr a freight train like Yakubu coming right at you, he takes it. it it's it's tough. I mean, who, who would have ever thought body sacrifice had the initials of CC right behind it? But, wow. But uh, Todd's got to be so proud. Yeah. You get to see Todd Clark. I get to see him lot. all the time, and, and he is. Clark is fouled here. Boy, they had the double coming with Bonner, and Bird reaches in. That's his fourth foul, Scott Gurney. Ooh. And you send Kevin Clark to the line. From here on out, it's double bonus. Uh, a little surprised uh, Clifford reached in there. The uh, proverbial lid of the coffin may be sliding over. Wow. Kevin will shoot one and one here for Southwestern. Final one and one for the Builders. Free throw from Clark is good. 75-57. They're just not giving the Bethel fans anything to get excited about. They really haven't. And, and you've seen these guys so much more than I have. When did you see a turning point in this team? to where they decided, they made the decision, we're gonna go after it. I feel like it was maybe after the Sterling loss, and Matt O'Brien didn't like slow starts. He started getting Hidalgo into the starting lineup, and Jarvis Jennings, Philip Smith, buying into roles, Trey White. It's amazing, it's phenomenal when guys buy into roles, Scott. It is, 
It is. They know their place. Roles. Well, it, it takes the pressure off. They know what they have to do. They just go out and do their job. Let everybody else do theirs. Don't try to do too much. Stay within yourself and let it happen. Through the lane, Bonner, tough shot over Philip Smith. No good. Rebound, dang bowl. Matt O'Brien's got the stop sign up. 6.20 to go. The Builders can get this under six minutes before they take another shot, yep. leading by 19. Going to try to take the air out of the basketball here. Boy, Dang, in this situation, has a lot of reads. Kevin right in front of us here. He's in range. <laughs> here comes Hidalgo with the screen. Bull down the right side into the lane. No look to Hidalgo. Four to shoot. Hidalgo to Bull. He's wide open. Pumps it up for three. Miss. Rebound. Phillip Smith. He'll give it to Clark. More clock can come off the clock, Scott. Yeah, that's just what they needed. They needed a big offensive rebound, needed to run that clock down, got exactly what they wanted. Double team coming. Clark dribbles away from it through a triple team. Nowhere open. He'll play to Bull. Four to shoot. Bull against Jonas. Bull muscling it to the rim and in. Dang Bull. How did that go in? Talking about playing wow. the, the game of angles. Woo. 78-57. Jonas. Into the lane, up with a shot, block, Kevin Clark. That looked like another charge to me. They'll get Kevin with his fourth foul. That was pretty darn good defense. Yeah, it was. It was. Kevin Clark collects. He was squared up, Scott. He was squared up, and he nailed him right in the middle of the chest, it looked like. Four on Kevin Clark now. Four on O'Brien, four on Clark for SC, four on Yakubu, four on Bird for Bethel. These guys aren't, these coaches are going with their guys too. Oh, yeah. Jonas at the line, free throw good. I thought it was a one and one, but no one moved. He swished it anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter, but 5.20 to go, 78-58 Southwestern. Well, as my dad used to say, dance with the one that brung you. And <laughs> Hey, hey, O'Brien and Clark, Coop, Hidalgo, Bowl. Jonas, two out of two at the line. 78-59, Southwestern. Abasolo into the front court against Jonas. From behind, poked away. And here comes Bird. Bird into the lane. Out to Jonas for a three. Miss. Rebound Todd. He'll put it in for two. Yeah, that was a beautiful pick. Just sitting there. There's a wide receiver out there waiting for that ball to come down. 78-61, to 61, Southwestern. The old wraparound poke away by the long arms of Jonas and again reaching in there. But now they'll square up. Abba Solo at center court. Jonas again. Boy, that's a violent reach in from Jonas. Now a screen coming from Hidalgo. Abba Solo driving into the lane. Plays to Pierce. Left wing. No. Rebound. Dang ball. They'll bring it out and CC's got it in his hands. 4.25 to go. Wiping off the skids. Look Man. out. Scott, the clock that's coming off. Now Jonas coming to double. And Clark steps through. Now Solo with it. Solo back to Pierce. Three to shoot. Deep three. Cooper Pierce. Miss. Bull runs it down. Oh, no. They're going to call a foul from the back side here on Bird. Yep. No, they're going to get it on Bull. Get on Bull. Tough call from this wing. It'll be a one and one for Bethel down 17. And you said it, that surprised me that that was where the call came from some 30 foot away from, yeah. the, from, the, from the actual infraction and Bull gets his third. Third foul on Bull. One and one for Yakubu. Here comes Andrew O'Brien back into the game for Southwestern for Hidalgo. 4-0-8, Scott, from a KCAC tournament title for SC. You just feel that intensity yeah. burning. It's getting, that flame's getting hotter and hotter. Yakubu, one and one. Builder fans making noise. His free throw is good. Bethel's free throw shooting, Scott, much better here in the I second was, half. I was thinking the same thing. They are lighting it up from the free throw line right now. One more free throw. But is you got to take advantage of it when it happened. First half, they weren't. You, as he took advantage of that. Going back to that foul on Bull, you call that, but then you let Jonas numerous reach-ins through the gut of Abba Solo. I just, even though that Bethel's down, you got to keep calling it the same. Both free throws in, inbounds comes to Clark. He's going to let things clear out. Guarded by Bird. He's a marvelous defender. Double team coming. Bounces to O'Brien. Boy, I love the pass fake high. Bounce it low. 
O'Brien into the corner to Solo. A little confusion there for SC. Builder lead is 15. Now O'Brien with it. O'Brien lobbing ball for the dunk. <laughs> the alley oop to Dangbo set up by O'Brien. He saw it coming. Beautiful call. Yakubu three. Good for Bethel. 80 to 66. The answer comes right back. Hey, this one ain't over yet. Now don't hang up. Inbounds here to Pierce. He'll play back to O'Brien. Builders by 14, 325 to go. O'Brien plays back to Solo. He's into the front court. Builders gonna try to take this under three minutes. Bull will hold it. Guarded by Bird. Here comes a double again. Bethel's been running defenders out. Pierce over to Solo. Solo to O'Brien. Shot fake, didn't get, didn't pump it up there. And now loose ball out of bounds off of Southwestern. Sometimes too much of that, yeah. you get kind of complacent. You, 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 your brain takes a little time out on you. Can't find the ball, Scott. <laughs> it went under the uh, curtain over there. <laughs> they found it. Easter egg hunt here. There you go. They bring Clark out with the four fouls. Inbounds comes all the way over here to Yakubu. Almost fell into the backcourt. Yakubu off a of screen into the lane. Up with the right hand. Good. 80 to 68. Bethel getting to score rather easily right now. Inbounds to Hidalgo. He'll play back to O'Brien. Now to Solo. Double team coming. Back to O'Brien. Builders into the front court. And losing it, but it goes to Dang Bowl. 2.37 to go. Jonas trying to reach in. Here's Bowl to Pierce. Pierce to O'Brien to Solo. Solo from the free throw line. Missed everything. Rebound Maccabi. Thresher is still alive. Builders could use a stop. Bird, stop, pop, free throw line, good. 80 to 70. Timeout Southwestern. Nice little push here by Bethel College. Yeah, we knew they was going to make a run at some point. Waited I, what I think was a little late to get it done, but they've taken advantage of SC's turnovers. You know, that Sol Abasolo shot, that's one he hit against Oklahoma Wesley, and that's one he hit against Bethany. Missed it this time. And for the Threshers, with O'Brien with four fouls, they're just going straight at that rim, Scott, and, uh, and and they're getting a lot of finishes in close. They really are, and it's, it's provided a little bit of separation for some open looks as well. I, again, as he stick to the game plan, take the medicine, take it right to the end, and, and they're going to get it done. I just it's. It's a 10-point lead on 902-16. A lot can happen in 2 minutes and 16 seconds. It's interesting, Scott. So Bethel, I don't see a lot of teams do this. They're running double teams out as the shot clock's starting to wind down. The builders have options. There are almost too many options, and you just don't know. They're so unselfish at times. No one knows who should take that candy. Right. Too many passes sometimes can be the death of you. And We'll see if that changes up after what Coach O'Brien has seen. Obviously, call a timeout. We're going to change some things up. Let's see what they come out of the timeout with. A little settling timeout. Builders still have two remaining. Bethel with three. Southwestern to play it in. It comes in here to Clark. Double team coming over to O'Brien. O'Brien makes you a little nervous with Bird guarding him. And now O'Brien back to the hoop. Gives here to Kevin Clark. Jonas all over him. Jonas all over him. Clark to the rim. Up with the shot. No call. Rebound. Pierce with it for Southwestern. Trying to bounce it to Bull. Turned it over. Here comes Bird. Bird driving it. Shot. No foul. They're going to call it on the floor on Southwestern. And that's going to go on Dang Bull. And that'll be four for Dang Bull. They're going to give him actually two shots. Whistle's starting to tightening up on the Bethel end here, Scott. They're calling more on the Southwestern end. Kevin Clark, I thought, was hit from the front and the back when he went into the lane just a moment ago. I thought so as well, but no call made. Bird Bethel continue to get his. A chance to get within single digits. They haven't been single digits all half, if I'm not mistaken. It has not. Now they are 80 to 71, 150 to go. Just what you expected, though. I mean, Bethel oh. had a run. You said it was going to come. It's yeah. a little bit later than we thought, but here it is. One more free throw. Got to continue to answer if you're SC. You can't and, force shots. And they haven't had the answer the last couple of minutes. Second free throw good by Bird. Now here comes Hutton. It's been playing keep away and then running out of time and yep. forcing something. 80-72, to 72, Southwestern by eight. 
Inbounds here to Clark. Clark up the sideline. Bonner trailing. Clark gives it here to O'Brien. O'Brien hounded here by Bonner. He'll give it off to Kevin Clark. 1.38 to go. A lot of bumping, and now they get the foul on Richardson. And a much-needed couple of free throws coming up for SC and Kevin Clark. And that'll be just his second. So no foul trouble for that. But, but again, it puts Kevin Clark back to the free throw line. Unfortunately, you're scoring without the, the clock moving, and you really want that clock to move right now yeah. at this point. But this, this is a good spot for SC to be in shooting free throws with Kevin Clark. First free throw is good. You know, I'm looking at the scoreboard. They don't have Kevin Clark in the game, uh, do they, on the right here? <laughs> I don't see his number switch it there. on that end? But there is a zero. Bethel doesn't have a zero anyway. Yeah. Clark hits both free throws for Southwestern. Much needed for the builders. 82-72 Southwestern. Can SC get a stop? You're, I feel like you're about to stop away. Here's Richardson in. Missed it. Rebound. Loose. Southwestern's got it. Clark. In some trouble and turned it over. He slipped or something or stepped on a, a thresher. And Kevin's pleading his case. Yes. That was very awkward. I'm surprised SC didn't even call a timeout there. Hard for us to see from this in exactly what happened there. The defense looked like they forced him to the to the baseline and then knocked him out of bounds. Builders got the stop. They needed Scott, but couldn't obviously secure it now. So Bethel another chance. They come into Maccabee, guarded by Pierce, trying to back in on Cooper, middle of the lane, up with the right hand, no good. Foul here on Cooper Pierce. Cooper's 118 to go. Cooper's got some to burn. That'll be his third, but again, you just can't have him have anything easy in the paint. Fortunate but, that they didn't bank that bucket. Yeah. For Maccabee, this is like a layup, though, I feel like. Maybe the broadcaster jinx, we'll see. Such a great shooter. His first free throw on the way is good. Yeah, it's so smooth. Boy, these guys, Scott, I mean, guys like Clark and Maccabee and Bird and Bowl. O'Bri I mean, they just play with so much heart and character. The passion they have for the game, you see it. Maccabee, two out of two. 82-74 Southwestern. Still a minute 18 to go. The inbounds to Clark. He'll bounce it back here to O'Brien. And O'Brien into the front court. Bird with four fouls. What a predicament for him. He'd love to reach in. Now over to Dang Bull. Builders trying to get it under a minute to go. Jason Artaz wants a double team to come. Bull navigating. Plays over here to Abasolo. Abasolo with eight to shoot. Over to Bur Bull. Bull through the defense. Up with the shot. That'll be an offensive foul on R Bull with 52 seconds to go. Both men went down hard. Bull slow to get up here. That's not a good sign. For the mound builders. I like the aggressiveness of, of Dang Bull right there. He saw a lot of blue paint there. Was able to get to the rim really close to that arc. Fifth foul on Dang Bull. So the referee is actually a timeout on the floor. They may take a look, but I felt like Richardson might have been just outside that arc. I think that's what they're going to look at here. 52 seconds to go. Didn't even waste it. No. Nope. Builders lead it by eight, but now they're defensive specialist out of the game, Scott. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, man, as far as the senior going out uh, in the championship game, gave it all, put it all on the floor. Got to respect that. Well, boy, Bethel Next can get it up. two here, Scott. They can really make things interesting, even a three. Here's Bird. He's going to be guarded by O'Brien. Off the screen. Plays it back to Maccabee. Tough three on the way. Missing. Battle for the rebound. Tipped around. Hidalgo's got it for Southwestern. Jump ball is called. The arrow to Southwestern. Hidalgo Ooh. just being a man and then ripping that ball away. 82-74 SC. 39 seconds to go. Trey White into the game for SC. Offense for defense yep. here. Got your shooters on the floor. Bird, Got your ball handlers. Bird remains on Clark. You know the builders want to get it to Kevin. Builders have the lug drill. Both teams with a double bonus from here on out. What a surge by the Threshers. This is what pedigree does, right? I mean, these guys have been here three years in a row for a reason. Absolutely. The cream rises to the top. <laughs> you play your best basketball at the end of February, 1st of March, and 
You got to tip your hat to both these squads. Oh, laying well, it all out there. Tough it has been. Builders, can they get it in? How long can Bethel last? Inbounds comes to Solo. Abba Solo over to O'Brien. Back to Solo. Bird and Yakubu, they don't want to foul. Abba Solo into the front court for Southwestern. O'Brien with it, and there's a foul on Maccabi. 28 seconds to go. Celebration starting, but I'm not that comfortable just yet. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Still pretty tight over here in this seat. But college kids, they're a little looser than we are anyway. Just slightly. O'Brien to shoot two for Southwestern. His first free throw is in there. Three possession lead. Now our Taz will call a timeout. I don't want to go anywhere. I got the great Scott Gurney with me tonight. <laughs> We're going to keep it right here. Mound Builders lead by nine. Another free throw, Scott. It's a four possession lead. Free throws oh. have been absolutely huge for both these teams. Being able to shoot at a high percentage for SC has proven so valuable. We're looking and trying to get stats here yeah. up real quick to see exactly. 25 for 25 Southwestern at the free throw line tonight. I don't want to jinx it, but even if they miss, that's phenomenal. And what, what are we looking at on the other side? And Bethel? 20 of 24. 20 of 24. There were 6 of 10 at halftime, remember? Yes, it was. So they're 14 of 14 in the second half. missed. It's amazing. But that's what you want. Yeah. That's what it should be at this point in the season. It should be your two best going Ref at it, playing Ref their best basketball. Referees aren't deciding that these players are. Exactly. O'Brien second. Free throw rims out. Here comes Bethel. Down nine. They're going to have to start firing from distance, you would think. Maccabi off a of screen. That's offline. No good. Rebound out of bounds. Off of Southwestern. 19 seconds to go. We're still... A little tight over here, Scott. I notice you and I notice me a little rigid. <laughs> it's a little rigid right now. Until it says double zeros or triple zeros. Bird into the lane. Up with the shot. Miss. Rebound of a solo. I feel better now. <laughs> Clark with it. Ten seconds to go. Clark into the front court. A tournament championship for Southwestern <laughs> College. Kevin. Kevin. Easy. 83 to 74. Southwestern <laughs> wins it. And Kevin Clark with a little wave to the Bethel students, which is all right. Burgos, his first year at Southwestern, and he's got a, a tournament championship title. Well, a phenomenal win for this SC crowd. Kevin Clark playing to the crowd. I love it. Kevin. MVP chance for Kevin Clark. Why not? Oh, and it should be. A 46-31 lead at halftime. SC just kept the pressure on. Just kept staying ahead. Kept answering the bell each and every time. An 83-74 win here against the Threshers. The surge by the Threshers was tremendous, but it was too late, wasn't it? It really was too late. I, th I thought it just started too late to make that move. Play. Tip your hat to them. They gave it a heck of an effort. Listen to this crowd. I love it. I'm, I barely have the mic up, and it's registering louder than you and I. Yeah, it is. It's starting to clip out. Wow. What a phenomenal atmosphere. KCAC, tip your hat to you, man. Oh. I'm telling you what, you put on a heck of a championship and you couldn't ask for two better competitive teams to go at it. And I'm looking at guys like Jarvis Jennings, who was a starter, turned into more of a bench player. He's excited as dang bowl is. And we're going to keep it right here. Scott Crawford's going to hand out the hardware. Hans Nickel is getting all the champion t -shirt, championship T-shirts out. The trophy hoisted high by Cooper Pierce. Bull and Clark, a couple of Cali guys right there. That's got to be fun for you to see right it there. It is. I mean, it, it just makes the heart beat a little bit harder, you know, and uh, just to see the smile on Matt O'Brien's flag yeah. facing these seniors. Obviously, the, the work is not done for them. They no. get to play on, and uh, uh, just a, a phenomenal, phenomenal night for the SC faithful. The auto bid for Southwestern. 
there wasn't much doubt that we were gonna see their name called on Thursday. Now there's no doubt. No doubt about it. Ah. Nice looking shirts from the KCAC. Absolutely. So the photos are coming. And in the meantime, Scott, there's a couple of women's teams just chomping at the bit to get out here, but uh, the Mon Builders are going to get their chance to celebrate right now. Definitely, and, and well-deserved. I mean, just a phenomenal game in every aspect. When I, we talked about it in the beginning of the contest, how physical they had to be in the paint, how that would transition into the, the, the pace of the game, being able to move the basketball in transition, and then on the other end, could your shooters be shooters? Could they be free enough to feel it? And they were. Unbelievable night in Mound Builder Nation. A comfort, you were at the Bethany game in the quarters. It didn't look good for Southwestern down double digits under eight minutes to go. You think about that run since then, wire to wire win at Bartlesville. Pretty much, they fell behind 2-0 here. I'm trying to think of any other deficits, but they led most of this game tonight. They really did. And now they're rushing to the crowd. And, <laughs> and, and, and like what you said, just a wire to wire win. Obviously, knew the mindset. They knew what they had to do. And they went out and did it in a business like manner, taking care of what they had to do, not worrying about what the other team did. Just focus on being who they are. And they didn't step away from that. Amazing. We're going to step aside on an exciting post game show coming up next. Mondolers win 83 74 here on Bob FM. <laughs> <laughs>